Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today we're going to talk about our three brains. Now this is a really interesting subject. I'm not going to go into it as much as I go into it in my book, but I am going to give you a lot of references and books that you can read about this. This is a very interesting phenomena that actually started in the early 1990s. Now, the 1990s were referred as the decade of the brain. And the reason being is never before were scientists and researchers and everybody in the brain community able to see the brain as they now could see it. And the reason, of course, was was technology. So now they were able to film the brain, take photographs of the brain, do spec scans, all these different ways of looking and at and studying the brain. Now they found a lot of interesting things. What they found was the brain in our head, 85% of it is the cortex, which handles our intellectual functions. 15% of the brain, there's a little section of the brain, it's about the size of a walnut, and it's called the limbic system, and it handles our emotions. Now here's what had stumped the researchers. They said, no, wait a minute. How can 15% that emotion override the intellectual? Because how can 15% override the 85%? Okay, it's the emotions overriding the intellect. And they said, this is impossible. 15% can't override the other 85%. Now, you know that that is true and so do I because when you're feeling down or sad or depressed or anxious or whatever negative emotion that you may be feeling that day, of course you don't want to read something that is intellectual stimulating. You're trying to find some kind of something to relax you and de-stress and so forth. And our kids are the same way. So what these scientists decided to do is to take, go on a scavenger hunt throughout the body and guess what they found? There are more emotional cells in the heart than there are in the brain. The study started coming out in 1991, and they found that there is the, the brain act, or the heart, our heart is actually a brain, and that it communicates with the brain in our head via biochemis, uh, biochemically, biophysically, and all through these, this vast network of neurotransmitters. They found that, the, uh, that it is a brain because it can learn, it can remember, it can think. But then there was another doctor by the name of Michael Gershon, who is a medical doctor and his specialty is the gastrointestinal intestinal tract. And he said, not so fast. He said, in his own words, I have been studying the ugly gut for, the la for my entire career. And he said, there are more emotional cells in the gut than there are in the brain and in the heart combined. And he said, 95% of the serotonin that is produced and made in the, in the body is made in the gut. And he said, the brain in the gut communicates with the brain in our head via the spinal cord. And the reason that it is considered a, a brain is because of how the, the, our, our emotions are an extremely important part of our mental health. And those neurotransmitters that include all those hormones that are made in the gut help us to feel better help us you know, regulate our moods, and that it is a thinking brain. So what they concluded were these three things. Number one, we have a, <clears throat> a brain in our head, and that handles our intellectual functions. We have a brain in the heart, and that is a little bit trickier, because what they found is that that handles our intuition, that handles our um, conscience, um, which is definitely tied to our character. The ability for us to, a child, to be able to discern right from wrong. Now, in other words, the brain and the head knows, but the brain and the heart understands. Okay, so what, uh, when you look at, in terms of conscience and intuition, you say, okay, when does a child learn right from wrong? What the law says, basically, where they hold a child accountable for their actions and have to be responsible for their actions is between the ages of 7 and 15. However, other studies show that even a 21-month-old child can discern between right and wrong, which is really interesting. If you study different religious sects, some of them say that they believe the accountability is the age of 7, others the age of 8, other the age, others say the age of 11, and still others say the age of 13. So it's a, wide, uh, it's a wide variety of ages there. But again, the law is what we go back to between the ages of 7 and 15. That is the heart brain. 
Now, the brain in our gut is teeming with emotions, so that brain is mainly responsible for our emotions. Again, the brain in the head, intellect, brain in the heart, intuition, and con our conscience, and the brain in the gut is our emotions. And they all communicate with each other via this vast network of neurotransmitters. Now, let me leave you with this bonus fact, and this is something that I think is extremely important for parents. <clears throat> do these three brains, and this is something that I've asked, do these three brains, do they develop at the same time? And the things that we do, society, of course, our society from day one has all been about the intellect. What are all the different things that you and I can do with, for our children to build up their intellect? They know that the cortex of the brain is rapidly growing between the ages of three and seven. So they are constantly saying, we've got to have those rich experiences. But other brain researchers have come out and said, no, the brain constantly grows. It constantly gets better with age as long as you are using it. So we know that their rich experiences will help grow the brain in our head, will help grow our intellect. Well, what about this brain in our heart? And what about the brain in our gut? What about our emotions? What about our intuition and our conscience? Are those brains developed at the same time as the brain in our head? So that is the question that I want you to think about, and that's the question that we're going to address on, on the next one. But let me also leave you with some important books that I'd like you to look at and read. One, is, one of them is, I don't have it, it's called Enriching Heredity. It's by Dr. Marion Diamond at the University of California, Berkeley. It was written many years ago, but you can still get it on Amazon. It's actually very interesting when she talks about integrating the emotions with the intellect. Heart Math, The Heart Math Solution, this is a very important book. It will go into all the different ways that the heart uh, communicates with the brain in our head and the brain in the gut and how the three of them combine and what the heart is mainly responsible for in terms of intuition and uh, our conscience. This is Dr. Michael Gershon's book, The Second Brain. In fact, he uh, maintains that the brain in our gut actually is should be considered the second brain. This is more scientific, but it will break it down. It is extraordinarily interesting on how he will break it down and, and help you to understand how this brain and the gut works. Another one that I'm going to be talking a little bit more is Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goleman. And he states that the emotional intelligence of a child is even more, and building that up is even more important than their intellect or um, Anything else, their emotions also has to do with their social skills. And in society, social skills trump intellectual cell skills. Now, another thing to think about is why is this so important? Well, we all know children that grow up to be, maybe they're extremely bright, but maybe they have no conscience whatsoever. They don't care how they tromp on people, how they treat people, or anything else. We call these people sociopaths, and our prisons are full of them. Or maybe you have a child that you're raising and you're really emphasizing their intellect, but um, their emotions are, are, are lacking and their emotional intelligence and building up that is lacking. So oftentimes we meet adults who are, yes, they're bright, but they have the emotional maturity of a gnat. So we, what are things that we can do to help develop our child's emotional intelligence and their, uh, their, that emotional of the brain? How do we tap into that? So that's what we're going to cover in our next um, episode of Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow.